Hey everyone, long time no see. I sincerely apologize for the lack of content. In all honesty, I've been juggling a lot of my play with health issues, and content creation unfortunately had to take a back seat. But I've missed doing this a ton though, and I figured since the newest update to Darktide just came out, I was well overdue for some brand new builds. Now I'm not sure if everyone else suffered as much as I did, but all of my loadouts and builds previously were made null due to the update's new configuration towards class synergy and build diversity. That being said, I finally revisited a build that I've been working on since my last upload, but I never found a use for it because of the randomization of blessings I never had the luck of finding. But now with the itemization update, I'm finally able to make my build really shine. Alright, enough talk, let's dive in. First off, let's go over the weapons. In my opinion, this build's melee option is very versatile. However, I would recommend running something with wide sweeping capabilities so you can easily take care of any horde that pushes into you. I went with the Mark VI Power Sword for the wide sweeps with Power Cycler and Brutal Momentum. This should be enough to take out any minor horde enemies as well as any maniacs that push close to us. And this can go a long way when you have to save a teammate or yourself with Brutal Momentum as you could chew through enemies' weak spots without worrying about their hit mass. Now when I was theory crafting this build, I wanted to use this shotgun to chew through enemies' hit mass using Man Stopper and Flechette, but it wasn't always reliable in big room fights and, depending on the team, it fell short most of the time. So with this new update, I was able to level it up, and now that I have all the blessings, I went with Full Bore and No Respite instead. This allows the Agrippina Mark VII shotgun to chew through enemies with the Slug Round, and it provides more damage within a contained area. Now anytime an Ogryn type enemy pushed me, I could rely on my Boomstick to put the work in quite easily. Not to mention with how strong Smite has become with this update, staggering enemies are abundant with a Psyker on your team. Now that reinforces your damage with no respite. And since we're dependent on crits, you'll want some percentage on crit chance and damage the carapace enemies so you can easily manage any big boys that push your team or yourself. Again, like I usually say in every other video, curios are purely up to you. Now I went with 3 maximum toughness all around because I want to stay healthy the entire time and you'll see later in the build why. Along with that, I have resistances to gunners, snipers, tox flamers, and bombers. And to top it all off, I went with ability regen so I can keep my team alive and healthy. So I know I can yap a bit with all the talents I went with, but I wanted to shake up my formula here to make it a little easier to understand to both the average player and my veterans out there. Now, like usual, I'm going to show you the full tree, and I want to assign each talent with an appropriate tag. First off, let's go with our offensive talents. To start us off, I took Fire Team for the damage increase for everyone in Coherency. And since we'll be playing close with all of our allies, this was an easy pick to help assist all of our teammates. Now with Confirmed Kill, we can gain toughness back quite easily as we focus on killing any specialists or elites. That's a flat 10% on each kill, and then 20% over the following 10 seconds. Next up is Demolition Stockpile. With this talent, our class kind of feels like a Grenadier now. We can spam grenades pretty much anytime there's a big room battle with tons of specialists or elites. Not to mention we have a 5% chance to earn back our nade with each kill made by ourselves or our teammates. I took Shredder Frag Grenades to bleed and stagger any enemies giving our team trouble. Grenadier for the extra nade and Grenade Tinkerer for the 25% damage and radius boost we get with our Shredder Nades. This can make a huge difference when it comes to reviving a teammate or trimming the fat when it comes to a horde of ragers or ogren types. Feel free to nade them and then pick them off with your shotgun. Speaking of shotguns, Longshot makes the Slug Shotty shine bright as it pushes out an additional 20% more damage based on your range from the enemy. So if you see a sniper in the distance, load that round in and send it. And with opening salvo, as long as you keep your shotgun reloaded, we gain an additional 10% crit chance towards any ranged enemy that we shoot. But to help aid that talent, I chose Volley Adept, which as long as we focus on specialist and elite kills, we can reload 30% faster. And with Tactical Reload, we'll be able to do so 25% faster as long as our weapon has ammo in it. Lastly, for our offensive talents, we have Twin Blast, which gives us a 20% chance to throw an additional nade. Again, this can have the opportunity to be very clutch during tight moments with your team or on your own. Now let's talk about our defensive talents and how we should be playing beside our team. With Voice of Command, we can buff our whole team with toughness using Duty and Honor, and revive anyone that goes down with only in death does Duty end. Don't stress about the ability cooldown increase, as it will go down much faster with our Curios regen and Tactical Awareness. This makes it so we can get a flat 6 second cooldown with each specialist kill. So play to your strengths during any big fights, look out for specialists once you use voice command, and once you do so, you can rely on your team to push through the horde now that they are staggered and open for attack. Up next, we have Born Leader. This can help replenish everyone's toughness as we replenish our own. I've played a few Auric missions now with this build, where I barely see anyone's toughness drop below 50% because of this and voice of command. 
But to amplify our team's survivability, we want Charismatic, as this buffs our aura radius by 50%. On top of that, I took Close Order Drill to supply ourselves with 33% toughness damage reduction as we stick close to all of our allies. Leave No One Behind can be strategically used for our combat ability or manually reviving a teammate, as it gives us a movement speed boost and stun immunity as we move to our downed ally. They will also receive a 33% damage reduction upon reviving them for 5 seconds. I also found one motion to be very useful in adjusting between shots and horde clearing, granting us 25% weapon swap speed. We can also take Iron Will for a 50% reduction to toughness damage as long as we're above 75% toughness. This is why I recommend at least two toughness curios as we want to keep our toughness high for more leeway in between fights. Now with all of our talent points, we also have these additional modifiers that give us more crit chance, health, range damage, reload speed, stamina, suppression boost, toughness, and toughness damage reduction. All in all, the Slug Runner is a commanding veteran who boosts the team with superior toughness regen and can lay down any threat from range or close quarter combat. You'll need to play close to your allies, but you should be doing that regardless as their strength in numbers. Just remember to play to your strengths and have faith in your team. Now as this video uploads, I'm going to also put a poll up on my channel as to which class you'd like to see get a build next. But until next time, thank you for stopping by, my name is Zen, and I hope to see you again real soon. Enjoy the match.
Okay. 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 Okay.